Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back to my kitchen. Today, I'm going to be growing grass, not that kind of grass. I'm going to be growing wheatgrass and I'm going to try to transform it into maltose. It is a diglyceride, a very simple sugar composed of two glucose molecules. Maltose is a sweetener. It's amber in color. It is very thin and almost taffy like kind of like honey and it is used to sweeten all kinds of sweet and savory foods and you can find it all over Asia and I didn't know until very very recently that it is derived from wheat I had no idea more specifically the wheatgrass now this isn't so surprising if you've ever had a shot of wheatgrass before my first job was working at a juice bar and I would make wheatgrass shots and I remember the first time I had one I was so surprised at how sweet the wheatgrass was it has a very grassy intensity and makes your teeth kind of green, but it's very, very sweet. Today's recipe inspiration comes from Yan Pan's Little Kitchen. I'll put a link down below to their original video, but I found my way to making homemade maltose from a video I saw where big tufts of grass were grown to make a dessert, and I was blown away. I said, really, one ingredient dessert made from grass? And then I learned about maltose, and I said, I need to make this because it just sounds so fascinating. It's very, very simple. It is composed of essentially two ingredients plus water and of course proper technique. So let's go ahead and get started. This is a very involved process and I really do hope it works out because if not, I'm going to be investing a lot more time in it, but better me than you. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, the first thing we need to do is grow our wheatgrass. Isn't this lovely? Look at this beautiful tuft of wheat grass. I started this about eight days ago. A beautiful lovely from Montana sent me these gorgeous wheat berries. So I measured 150 grams of wheat berries, placed them in a bowl, covered them with water, and allowed them to soak overnight. After soaking, I drained them and I spread them out into a tray. You want something that's nice and wide so that you have one layer of wheat berries. Then you'll cover this with a piece of light fabric that has been soaked in water and then wrung out. Wheat berries are wheat seeds and we want them to germinate or to sprout. A couple times a day you want to sprinkle some water or give these really good misting, again to keep the wheat berries moist. You don't want them to be too wet otherwise they will mold. So after 24 to 48 hours you'll start to see a little rootlet sprout out. So once you see a little nubbin of green start to here that is the beginnings of the grass so you can remove the fabric but still keep watering twice a day but no standing water you don't want any standing water pooling in the bottom otherwise it could get moldy so then your grass will begin to grow and the recipe says when it's about four to five centimeters we're ready for the next step so that's where I am right now so once your grass gets to be about this long we have to prepare the next ingredient which is the sticky rice or glutinous or sweet rice so the recipe says for 150 grams of wheatgrass seeds we need 1200 grams of glutinous rice and when I was weighing that out I said that is not gonna fit in my rice cooker but then I reread the recipe and it said for a hundred grams of wheatgrass seeds we can use 800 grams of rice so basically it's a one to eight ratio of grass seed to rice so I soaked 800 grams of rice overnight and that works out to be about five rice cooker cups and then I cooked it according to my rice cooker directions. This is my beautiful grass, isn't it gorgeous? And here is my rice that I've cooked and it makes a very large pot of rice. Now, in Yan Pan's video, I noticed that the rice was very sticky and wet. So I went ahead and added two cups of cold water to the rice and it has more of that kind of sticky, consistency although theirs was seemed even wetter than this the important thing is we want this to be at about 140 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit we don't want this to be too hot because what we're going to be doing is fermenting this oh we're at 152 156 so we're pretty close to temp actually and now we're going to prepare the wheatgrass so I've got a large bowl of water and we are going to rinse our wheatgrass so this is 150 grams and for this amount of rice we only need 100 grams so I'm going to be using about two-thirds of this. 
um, after about three days, the roots of the wheatgrass will be all kind of entwined. And for watering, you just can run this right under the tap and then drain the water. It'll create a mat so you don't have to worry about the seeds falling out. And I found that to be the simplest way to water rather than misting and sprinkling. So just kind of your own hydroponic system. I did that twice a day. And this is the beautiful results. Gorgeous, right? Look how thick the root system is. Isn't that beautiful? And then you can see the seeds right on top. So I'm gonna take my wheatgrass. Look at that, beautiful. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. And each one, so each seed is one blade of grass. Isn't that great? So now we're gonna place this into our water. And we're gonna give this a good rinse. And if we have any ones that are molding or have gone bad, we're gonna remove those. But mine look great. I don't see any little moldy bits. Oh, if you got anything like that, you wanna remove. But it's so cool that each individual blade of grass comes from one seed. Isn't that cool? Isn't that great? Every single blade is one seed. Alrighty, you can also grow wheatgrass for your pets. I used to grow wheatgrass for my cat who loved it. My chickens on the other hand seem to be a little bit indifferent. They seem to prefer the lawn to the wheatgrass, but you know, you never know. Maybe your chickens or pets are a little bit different, but my cat definitely loved it when I had a cat. I just learned that maltose was composed of two glucose molecules after watching an Anne Reardon video. So Anne, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and for teaching us so many great things. Now we're going to take our cleaned and washed grass and we're gonna chop it all up. I'm gonna chop this pretty finely. Kind of nuts, right? We're just like, we just grew this beautiful grass and now you're chopping it up. Yep, it smells great. It smells just like summertime, like you're cutting grass. So we're gonna ferment this for six hours. And in Yan Pan video, they did it in the rice cooker. There's a fermenting option, apparently. And mine does not have that. Mine has a keep warm option, but from what I researched, it's a little bit too warm for this process. We want the temperature to be about 135 degrees Fahrenheit. And I don't want to kill all that goodness. So what I'm doing is I am warming my oven behind me to that temperature. I have a warm function and we're going to be doing the fermenting in there. Plus it has a timer so I'll know precisely when six hours has passed. So have that well chopped. Now this rice is warm but is not piping super super hot. Let's check the temperature. 159 degrees. So I'm adding a couple cups of water this very large pot of rice. Now we're gonna add our grass. Isn't this amazing? Okay, I'm gonna chop up the rest of this as well. So cool. This is a very full pot. Add the rest of that water. So I'm gonna place this in my oven that's set at 135 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're gonna let this ferment for six hours. Alrighty, see you a little bit. <laughs> Alrighty, my lovelies. It's been six hours since I put the rice grass paste into my warm oven. And now we are ready to move on to the next step. Let me grab the mixture. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see what this looks like. There's a lot of Whoa, look at that. It smells kind of grassy. Look at that. Interesting. Okay, so now this is our very watered down sugary syrup. All right, let's give this a taste. Mmm, it's sweet, lightly sweet. It reminds me a lot of the raw cane juice I had when I made the vegan chicken drumsticks and I used a piece of cane, sugar cane for the drumstick and I chewed on it and that's what this tastes like. It's lovely. So for the next step, I have a nonstick saucepan and I've got a strainer lined with a few layers 
of cheesecloth. And we are going to strain this. We just want the liquid portion. Look how soupy it's gotten over the six hours. Isn't that amazing? Wow, I love this. I love this so much. Look at that. This process is kind of similar to maple syrup making, where you take the sap from a sugar maple tree and you cook it and reduce it down. But instead of maple sap, we are using grass and rice. So cool. And drop the sides. And we can really give this a squeeze so we can get all of that precious liquid out. It's still pretty hot. Next, we're going to reduce this down until it gets to a thick syrup. And the best way to figure out the correct consistency for the syrup is to cook it to a specific temperature. And that's about 107 degrees Celsius or about 224 degrees Fahrenheit. With these kinds of projects, I like using a probe thermometer. I can just set the temperature and that way I don't have to keep looking back and forth at my thermometer. My thermometer will tell me when it is ready. Malto syrup is also known as malt sugar or malt syrup, and the applications are just the same as you would use sugar. It's used to get that glossy sheen and that sweet flavor of Peking duck. It's used in mooncakes and used in all kinds of sweets. It's also served as a sweet treat just on a stick or spread between a couple of crackers. Tons and tons of applications for this. So I'm going to go ahead and cook this down. It's probably going to take an hour or two before we get it to the correct consistency. And then we'll give the syrup a taste. Okay. See you in a little bit. <laughs> Alrighty, my lovelies, I am back and my Malto syrup is complete and it totally famously worked. And I am so stinking pleased. So I took my sweet kind of brothy mixture and I cooked it down. It took about an hour and 16 minutes, brought it up to a simmer, reduced it down and just let it boil away. As the mixture got thicker, I would give it an occasional stir to make sure it wasn't sticking at the bottom. At about 216 degrees or so, it started to change and get really foamy on top. And at that point, I would give it a pretty consistent stir. And then around 220 degrees, it started to heat up pretty quickly and got to the 224 degree Fahrenheit temperature that I was looking for pretty quickly, about five or 10 minutes. And at that point, I poured it into a clean glass jar and it made about two cups of syrup. Look at this beautiful color. It's kind of amber in color. It looks a bit like honey. I made this about two hours ago, but the middle is still warm. So when this is completely cooled at room temperature, it should be fully thickened. This like sugar can be cooked at a higher temperature and the more you cook it, the harder and more solid it will become at room temperature. It's like the hard crack stage when you cook sugar. But let me show you the consistency at this point. So beautiful, that syrupy, gorgeous texture. And that's simply made from two ingredients in water. Wheatgrass, rice, and water so stinking cool. It's got a similar viscosity to honey, but a little bit thicker, a little bit more kind of chewy and stringier, but let's see how it tastes. Here we go. Itadakimasu. Mmm. It has a nice kind of caramelly, brown sugary flavor to it, but a little bit different. It has, what is that flavor? Mmm. It reminds me of chrysanthemum flower tea. It has a kind of herbaceous flavor to it. Not vegetal, but kind of slightly herbal, not medicinal, but pleasant, but a very distinctive flavor to be sure. It's good. I like it. Mm -hmm. So this is very syrupy and beautiful. looks just like honey. It is in fact less sweet than sugar. So about 30 to 60% from what I've read. Fascinating. All right, my lovelies, I am so pleased with the results and just astounded really that you can make this beautiful sweet syrup from rice and wheatgrass. It's just 
incredible. So stinking cool. All right, my lovelies, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, check out my website. I will include a printable version of this recipe. I think it would be absolutely fantastic to do with kiddos. You can show them the whole process of germinating seeds to making this wonderful syrup. All righty, my lovelies, I shall see you in my next video. Toodaloo, take care, bye. <laughs>